<laughs> Tonight we're going to talk about prophecy and prophesying. And um, we want every, I, I just believe in the Lord for a miracle that everybody in the place here tonight would be able to experience the realm of prophecy. And in hooking up with that realm, you'd be able to yield to that realm. The first time that you ever really hooked up with tongues, when the baptism of the Holy Ghost first came to you by this wonderful work of grace, you had an experience of doing something and, and, and feeling a realm that you never had felt before. And it was produced. Okay? Some, be, some people were, said that they felt awkward. I didn't feel awkward. I was completely gone. I was gone with the wind. <laughs> Finding an English word was pretty much an impossibility. And, uh, you know, um, for a number of years, what I would do is I would just pray with the understanding until I couldn't pray with the understanding anymore. And, uh, uh, you know, and the, the power of the Holy Ghost would kick in with respect to the manifestation of the tongues uh, or language of the Spirit, tongues of fire. And then it got to a place where it just did, it was just a continual flow. And uh, as the more you give yourself to a gift, the stronger it becomes. The more sermons you preach, the stronger the preaching becomes. So long as it's given by the anointing, you're learning how to depend upon the anointing for this realm. So in like now, in like fashion, now that you have experienced that realm of the gifts of the Spirit with respect to tongues, it's easy for you to just uh, qu quickly get into that realm. And uh, hopefully, and Hopefully. Now, don't be sad. Don't be distracted now. There is no reason to be because that's not how. We've already gone through those lessons now. I, I, don't have to do, I don't have to look around and say, my goodness, do I have to go and repeat those first lessons? Because if you're not willing to do the first part, you can't have the next part. I'm really, at, by the Spirit of the Lord, building on something. I'm establishing, I'm establishing a foundation that you must have these things in your life to have the next things. That's why a lot of people are just stuck in one area. They feel like it's for information only. And it's like this. It's almost like they're relaying over and over and over again the foundation of repentance from dead works. And, and you know, Paul exhorts us, says, no, 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 no. Let's go on into perfection now, okay? Let's not relay the foundation. You got the foundation. You know where you're supposed to be at. If you can't yield to the Lord in the realm of joy and being happy, it, it just you ain't going to go anywhere else. I mean, goodness, you'd, what would you be prophesying out of? That wouldn't be good. <laughs> well, well, what would you be moving in, this, in the spirit, gifts of the spirit for? Now, I, I will say this. I will say that tongues is the entrance gift. And it will allow you and I to enter into every dimension of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit because the Lord has given us a way to hook up with Him in our emotions, in our appetites, in our passions, in our thinking realm, in our speaking realm. So that's why, I, I mean, it's just real simple. You don't have peace, then pray in the Holy Ghost till the peace comes. And, it, uh, you know, someone says, you know, what, how much time should I spend praying in the Holy Ghost versus praying in the understanding? I would put it this way. Who prays the best? God, the Holy Ghost, or you? And so I would go with praying in the Holy Ghost until out of that comes an eruption of praying in the understanding. Because otherwise, all it is, it's, it's, it's it's not by the Holy Spirit. It's not something that is being produced by the Holy Spirit. It may be being produced by the Word. I love to hear people, if they're going to be, a, give me a Baptist prayer. Give me a Baptist prayer that is a praying according to the Word. Amen. If I'm going to get an Episcopalian prayer, give me a prayer according to the Word. If I'm going to get a Roman Catholic church prayer, give me a prayer according to the Word. If I'm going to get, you know, a Pentecostal prayer, at least give me a prayer according to the Word. But the Holy Ghost brings life and power to the Word. That's what He does. He brings, He manifests the Word just as when He, just as when uh, the Holy Ghost came upon Mary and the eternal Word became living flesh inside of her being to ultimately be manifested to the world. Even so now, Spiritually, the Holy Spirit also brings life and manifestation and reality and practical application and living truth to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And 
you know, I, I, I want every one of you to begin to understand how simple it is to prophesy. It really is, a, it, it, it is not an art. It's an encounter. It, it's not something that you learn. It's something that you get. Um, uh, you know, I was really, I'm, I'm really blessed to see people, for example, who I can watch. I can see them hook up with me in the anointing as I'm ministering. Okay, then I feel really comfortable. Like the other night, I handed off the microphone to Kelly. What I did was I got up. I started ministering by the word. Just, I knew that, that, uh, that Kelly was going to minister a bit to us. And so I just started flowing in the realm of the anointing. And when I handed the microphone to him, he grabbed the microphone and I saw the exact same anointing that was on me come on to him. It was already on him. But I saw him step into it, begin to function in the same flow. So I sat down and said to Daniel, I said, yeah, see, he just took the microphone. He's actually in the same flow. He's not going to go in a different direction. He's not going to stop and try to think through something and try to come out with, you know, this is a thing I need to communicate. Everybody just stayed right with it. It's just a flow. It really is. It's jumping into the stream and, and not kicking around trying to go in your own direction. Just go with the flow. How hard is it to go with the flow? Not hard at all. How hard is it to go in another direction of the flow? Difficult. Awkward, challenging, depending on the current, you may or may not make it, right? <laughs> so, I want to help you understand that we function in, I function in the gift, the revelation gifts. I don't minister outside the revelation gifts. I minister by prophecy. I minister by doctrine. That's a revelation gift. People think doctrine is something you get from Strong's Exhaustive Concordance because you know how to line up verse Scripture. It's not true. Doctrine comes the same way as prophecy. I minister by doctrine, by, by prophecy, by knowledge. I minister by, by th that instruction and wisdom of the Holy Spirit that He gives. I just flow in that realm. Now, when you're just willing to hook up with that and stay with that, then you have it too. Now, we really... We, by the grace of the Lord, set a, a platform for that in the meeting in the music, okay? Now, I, I, I am right now going through a phase and time where I'm training new people, as it were, to come into that realm, okay? Because in that realm, prophecy functions, okay? That realm is the basis for prophecy and the flow of prophecy and the flow of utterance gifts. And I say it's the basis because I'm going to turn back the dial, as it were, turn uh, back the pages to uh, the Old Testament and look at how that prophecy ultimately found a foundation in a springboard, okay? And, and I, I, I want to use the examples, for example, in, um, in the life of Saul. And when, when Saul, and I believe it would be uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, when Samuel came to Saul, he said, you're going to go um, and encounter a company of prophets coming down from worshiping. And they're going to be playing music. Man, it was a whole band. It was a band, a, pro a prophet band. And as they're, and, and, and they're going to be, they're going to have the harp, they're going to have the tambourine, they have all the instruments of worship. And they will be singing and worshiping and prophesying. Now, uh, in the context of the Old Testament, the scriptures weren't read like we read today in a Western culture. They are, or they are, they were sung. It's a song that you sing. That's the cantor, the singer. So every um, syllable and phrase in the Hebrew language has a tone and a pitch to it. And so that it literally has a stanza. It literally has uh, a music quality to all of it. So uh, this is something we want you to learn how to engage in. I watch as people, they don't want to engage. And you're going to have to engage. If you'll engage, you'll get past being tired. If you'll engage, you'll get past being uh, upset or worried or concerned or fearful or any other thing that may be trying to oppress you and afflict you in a realm called the, the natural everyday experience and circumstance of life, of which is included sickness and disease, 
all of these things, you can break through all of these things just by the act of beginning to praise God and worship and enter into that realm. Jacob lay a dying. He rose up off of his bed. He's there on his deathbed. He rose up off of his bed, leaned upon his staff and worshiped the Lord and lived at least another 30 years, something like that. There's a big, there's a great value to getting out of whatever it is you're doing by beginning to praise God and worship God and doing it such that where you're not just singing along, you want to go into a realm. We'll enter his gates with thanksgiving. This is a, this God is giving us the wisdom and the insight on how to go into a realm of divine power and glory. People want us, they, they, people don't participate over and again, and then they wonder why they don't get the results of the scripture. You want the results of the word of God? Then understand that God is, Father has given us a very practical wisdom of how to go into this realm. Enter the gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise, okay? Enter now into the holiest place of all with the blood of Jesus. So that's the ultimate, as it were, the last step. Because uh, at that, during, during that time, the closest they could get was, was the courts, okay? Then the priest who was given at an, a special anointing to minister in the holy place could then go on into the holy place and begin to perform the, minis, the, the ministry of the priest. And... I think that one of the great examples of that would be found in uh, First uh, Chronicles chapter 25, okay? And I could begin to read these things to you and begin at verse 1. I think verse 7, verse 8 is a very powerful verse of Scripture because you see that there, these are the priests ministering, ministering according to their course with uh, prophesying with the harp in their hand, singing all of these praises as David taught them. So David was able to minister to them a realm of the Holy Ghost that was given to him. So it was given to him how? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, what happened to him? He got a new heart. What kind of heart? A heart just like God. God said, I'm going to go find myself a, a, a man who has a heart just like me. So he goes and finds David and gives David a heart just like him. Okay? Because David wasn't born with a heart just like him. God gave him a heart just like him. Just like gives everybody else a heart just like him. There's a candidate. Okay? David just so happened to be a candidate. Father looked and found David. Not Eliphaz. Not another one of his brethren. David who was hungry for more. That's really what it comes down to. Because it's fundamentally about being hungry. It's fundamentally about wanting to do these things. There is no verse of scripture like the verse of scripture that we find. Uh, for example, at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And, you know, the folks that don't believe in the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit functioning in the church have got a real problem because there is no single subject about the activity of what we're supposed to be doing in church services that is more talked about and more highlighted and pronounced in the Bible than flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> so, I, you know, we are just going to have to understand there's a bunch of nonsense that you're going to have to push aside. I'm telling you, the testimony of one person is powerful for the good or for the bad. Okay? And there's many bad testimonies about functioning and flowing in the gifts of the Spirit because there's been many things that have, have, have been wrong. They've been abuses. And, 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 and there's been zeal. There's been good things that have, have not really measured up to the quality and, and the attribute of what God has purposed for us to have. But praise God for the people who were going after it. They wanted these things in their life. But the reality of it is, is prophecy is a flow. It's a wonderful flow that it, it, it doesn't uh, um, really differ that much from a song that sang and praised to God. It doesn't differ that much from it. It really doesn't. It does, it, the, the flow of it is that simple. It's that easy. It's that spontaneous. It's that real. It's deep. You can feel it, okay? When, when, when one of the things that I do... When I'm around training musicians, people flowing music, I'm watching, I'm watching for people to feel it, okay? I want them to feel it. And so many times what I do is I know I'm, I, carry, I carry this realm of God's divine glory. So I'll go walk by people. I just see what happens to them when I get near them. Because there is a, there, I have a, I'm a carrier of, a, of the glory realm of heaven. I mean, I got God on the inside of me and I know it. You know what I'm saying? I, I have the power of God and working operation in my life. I know how to yield to it and flow and therefore it has an effect. 
effect. It has an outward working just by getting close to people. And so we just, I stay at that till people can feel it. You need to feel the love. You need to feel the praise. You need to feel the excitement about being involved in this thing we call worship. It is truly a realm. It's not a stale, dry realm where you're trying to remember to sing a song in a sing-along time now. You know, put your crackers and juice away. It's time to get real kind of thing. It's time to advance out of just doing, you know, a, a nursery school program and step over into the big kids program, right? In God. And of course, I for, of course, I say that kind of facetiously. Well, very facetiously, facetiously. But reality of it is, is these things are for babies. I mean, the Lord has perfected praise in the mouths of babes and suckling. And it's like, you know, here we are prophesying, don't even know it, right, kind of thing, you know. Here we are just because it's coming out of the heart. It's coming out of the innermost being. Think about it. Papa supplied this. Now, I dealt the past few times in this meeting with the things that block up the well, that stop up that flow, that prevent you from accessing a realm that is available to you. That, by the way, is gonna be, it takes a lot to be able to see this. It takes surrender to be able to see this. Of, uh, but it's really demonic powers hindering spirits that you have given permission to block you out of that wonderful flow of the Holy Ghost. And then you grow a little bit in God and you decide, well, you know what? I'm not going to be blocked out anymore because I love His manifest presence too much. This feels too good to be there. Amen? Amen. I, I love being in heaven. I don't have to die to go to heaven. I get to live in heaven. Jesus died so I could live in heaven today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you look at, um, at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and and just want to highlight this verse of scripture to you in, uh, in uh, let's see, it's, um, let's see here, give me a minute. It's right here at the end. Verse 39, covet to prophesy, huh? And don't forbid to speak with tongues, covet to prophesy. Well, oh, well, my goodness. If I'm going to covet to prophesy, that means I've got this great passionate desire. I've got this hunger for it. I just got to have it. I want it. Why can't I have it? I need that. Look at that. It's beautiful. I got to have that. What does it take to get that? How much does it cost? How many hours must I work? Kind of thing, you know. I, I want this more than anything else. Okay. And um, so we, uh, we begin to understand then a little bit about a desire that's going on in the heart and then we're going to look to the source from which it comes and we're going to understand that all it takes is just a little bit of faith to function flow in this in this realm uh, and just one other thing that I want to say about praise and worship laying the foundation for prophecy is also um, uh, what is it it's uh, second Kings chapter 2 and the king of Israel right was it king of Israel uh, and the king of the southern kingdom Judah Jehoshaphat, right? And the king of Edom, they, they, they needed to find out something from heaven. They needed to find more out, more than what they had the wisdom or the insight to know, so they came to the prophet. And you know, the prophet's a little cranky that day. Why, well, why was he cranky? Because he was a man in his presence had no right to inquire of God. So why are you coming around me? Get out of here. That's basically what he said. He said, why do you go to the prophets of your father and of your mama? Get out of here. Basically what he said. And then, you know, Jehoshaphat's pulling on him and said, okay, because I regard you, okay, then bring me somebody who knows how to worship. And as soon as somebody who knew how to worship, who knew how to play a song from the heart by the Spirit, okay, and not even on the level, not even on the level that you and I have available, not even on the level that's going to happen in the church service tomorrow or Sunday, not even on that level, because they didn't have that access to that level. We, so we've been given a level uh, of unlimited access into the glory realm of God, unlimited interaction with the Holy Ghost because of what Jesus did for us. See, the Holy Ghost was not yet given until Jesus was glorified. <laughs> now, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, came upon people in a measure in times past, but nothing like's available now. But, 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 but let's just think about this. Well, we're going to have to understand that there is even a greater assault of the enemy trying to block people out from having this realm because it's such a greater realm that if people understood it, Satan wouldn't have a chance. I mean, the whole world would be saved in a couple of weeks kind of thing. 
you know, if there really are 750 million people who are baptized in the Holy Ghost on the earth, give me a break. Come on, you know. <laughs> How long does that take? How long does it take to reach the rest of the, you know, few billion? After that, that's almost a billion. So there's only more seven, more one to seven, pretty much, right? Maybe push it one to nine. You're not going to reach nine people. You didn't have anointing to reach nine people. The whole world saved, right? Is everybody listening to me? Does that make sense to you? Okay, so God doesn't care if he saves by many or by few. He does some radical things. But the only, the only, only power that is going to break off the yoke, the stronghold of Satan, is people who are freed themselves. You can't bring anybody into liberty when you're in bondage, huh? If, you, if, if, you're in, if you're blind, okay, and staggering around, don't see where it's coming from, don't know how to yield to God, you're going to fall in a ditch and everybody's falling, you're going to fall in the ditch with you. So we want to be liberated in the realm of function flowing in the anointing. We want to understand that there are practical aspects to flowing in the anointing. You've got to yield yourself to God, okay? Um, you know, if you walk with the Lord and just simply trust him, you're, gonna, you're going to purchase for yourself great boldness in the faith. Huh? I came in here tonight. I'm not timid. Do I look timid? I, I'm, do I look worried or concerned? I, I, got, I had this great boldness in the faith. I mean, it, it, really, boldness and confidence and certainty is something that comes out of, out of trust. I, I, there's this relationship I have with the Lord that's been developed in my life. And, and, but, but it doesn't take all of that to begin to blow in this wonderful grace. It really doesn't. The Lord has made it so easy for us all to have. Now, I want you to, to, I want you to take special note of that verse of scripture there in 2 Kings. And, uh, and, that, and what I want you to take special note of is how that as soon as the worshiper, as soon as the mu musician began to play, the scripture says, and the hand of the Lord uh, came upon Elisha. Is everybody with me? And he began to prophesy. Now, I want that to happen to you right now. Why? Because something's going and coming out of me that is stronger than that was coming out of that musician right now. At this very moment, here's the problem. You don't really understand how to yield to it. Hmm? There is a corporate anointing that you want to begin to understand. I want to bring you into that. I want you to understand all the things that would keep you from being able to be sensitive to what God the Holy Ghost is doing right now. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I have listed some of those. And I actually handed, gave you handouts. Because I figure maybe if you studied it and look at it a little bit longer, you would recognize the things that disconnect you from this wonderful corporate anointing that if anybody's prophesying, everybody can prophesy at that moment. When there is anybody that has an anointing, okay, anyone whatsoever, like the school of the, those guys who were coming down, the prophets who were coming down from the high place and Bethel singing it, and playing their instruments. And as soon as Saul got near them, what happened to them? him? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And what did he do? He began to prophesy. In, in some respects, similar to what happened when just a musician, and I know what kind of musician that was. That was a musician that would have been trained after the same fashion and order that David trained those of First Chronicles chapter 25. Not to just sing a song, but to be able to have this anointing that was made available to them to worship God by the, in, in, in a dimension uh, by the Spirit, a special anointing to praise and to sing and, and to give thanks unto the Lord and to, to magnify His name. It's a, a very, very small measure, just a very, very limited realm compared to that which is available to you right now and to me right now. Now, when you begin to know this, mm, something's going to happen. And then you're going to have to begin to deal with maybe the things that would shut you out of that and keep you from that. And, and then hopefully when you then allow the Holy Spirit to show you the things that are keeping you from flowing this realm, you'll hate it. You'll despise it. You won't allow it anymore. You won't allow it to cleave unto you, rule you, affect you, influence you. You'll run that rascal off. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the power of God. Huh? I'm telling you right now, it's the worst thing. I mean, there's... You know, it, it's a terrible thing to, to allow, uh, you know, 
unholy things in your life. It's opening up the door of your house to allow every kind of terrible things. Skunks running around the house, you know, uh, rats running around the house. And just a terrible place to live, right? You just don't, the people just don't, you don't even want that. And that, that pales to describe the things that I would uh, classify demonic influence to be. And the worst part of it all is it keeps you from all the wonderful realms of this life. If you would just simply be willing to function and flow in the heavenly realm, okay? All, you, all that's going to happen to your, to your life is this. You're going to have no room for all the temptation and the bad things. Because you just enjoy heaven too much, you don't want any more hell. Okay? And hell comes along, you go, no, I'm not having hell. I don't want to go to hell. I'm in heaven. <laughs> Who's going to choose hell over heaven? No one. Okay, when it really becomes that clear to you. Um, what do we watch? What do we watch? What is common among all ministries that I know of, that I've been around of, that I've personally been friends with, and also that I've known from a distance? What do they all commonly know about those people in the meeting that are going to flow in the gifts of the Spirit? There's one common thing. They all radically enter into worship. Show me a worshiper, I'll show you a person who knows how to flow on the anointing. Okay? Show me a person who knows how to begin to give their whole self over to worship. I'll show you a person who knows how to access heaven any moment, any time, anywhere. Doesn't matter what is going on. Paul, Silas, they're in prison, midnight. Okay? They've been stripped naked and spanked, whipped, beaten. Okay, cast into a dark prison cell. Those prison cells did not have bunk beds and televisions. Okay, those prison cells had nothing. It was slimy floors. They were pits. They were worse than uh, where we, uh, you know, we clean the stall of our cattle. Okay, it was a mess. What'd they do? They begin to sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they begin to sing and worship at midnight. What were they doing? They begin to enter in with thanks his gates with thanksgiving. They begin to enter into his courts with praise. What happened? place was shaken because that's why that's how father responds to it that's how father responds what happens is people get into doubt and despair and how is it that it worked out like this for me i can't believe it i surrendered my whole life to the lord and here i am going around <laughs> preaching and doing everything that god's wanted me to do and i'm in i'm, I'm here in the pit i'm here in the prison and you can do that if you want, but then you're, going, you're not going to have no prison doors open for you. You're not going to have no encounter with God. There's not going to be no miracle to take place in your life. You're going to have a worse result than what you had already to start with. Because all that is is you're cursing yourself. All complaint is is cursing. You're cursing yourself. Murmuring, cursing yourself. Huh? All, that's all, all that is is just, you just, why do that to yourself? Isn't it bad enough? Why don't you get out of that? <laughs> Quit doing that. Stop it. Somebody said, I think there's a witch cursing me somewhere. No, you're doing a good job on your own. You're going to need one. You know, it's time now to start worshiping. It's time now to start giving thanks. So get out of the ditch of rebuke and get raptured or caught away in praise. People are rebuking, 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 rebuking. You know, you see them 20 years later, they're still rebuking, rebuking, rebuking. I mean, do it once and done. You know, cast out that devil. It's going to turn your heart towards heaven. Praise. In fact, the reality of it is, is you can't really even do any rebuke of authority until there's been that wonderful release of heaven, that encounter with heaven. That's why the scripture says is to, to submit ourselves to God, to come under his influence, his divine empowerment. <laughs> to me is coming under his divine empowerment in the expressions of my being. It's not a religious ritual. It's not a spiritual activity. It is a dynamic of a relationship with God that allows me to access every realm of divine power. It would be the first gift that I've received without measure, a baptismal measure of it. I don't get five minutes a day of uh, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm not allotted a total of 1,500 hours for a lifetime. Use it wisely. I get to do this all the time and, and more and more. And, and, I, and to have it, this wonderful expression of divine power and authority that touches all of our spiritual life in realms that it's going to take you a long time to really begin to understand because no one can really explain it to you. You've got to walk it out by experience with the Holy Ghost himself to understand. But it's certainly why Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. 
Okay? In the same chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me just say something about the Spirit of the Lord come upon you. I don't have to have the Spirit of the Lord come on me. It's released through me. <laughs> Hallelujah. The concern and the shock comes to be when you discover you've been clogging them up for a long time. Huh? Oh, God, when the heavens come down, He already did. <laughs> Praise God, He already did. Hallelujah. Heavens were torn open and, and the Spirit of the Lord came down upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and, and He's been here ever since, ever since, but even in a greater way, in a greater, uh, uh, greater magnitude, greater uh, uh, availability. So let's look at verse 17, verse 18 of Acts chapter 2. Now that we've laid this foundation. I want to say this once again. The Spirit of the Lord doesn't have to come upon you, okay? The Spirit of the Lord flows through you. Now somebody says, okay, how about being filled with the Spirit? There is no question about this interaction of relationship because remember, the Holy Ghost is not only in us, He's with us. Hallelujah. <laughs> is a flow that is always there that activates in a greater dimension and measure on a continual basis more and more every time you give yourself to this realm right out of our innermost being the Holy Ghost is in me I've got a river in me not outside of me I've got a river in me with every syllable the anointing increases in my life I actually had a manifest presence and power of God show me that reveal that to me and when I'm telling you, when God came to me and showed me that with every syllable of praying in the Holy Ghost, the anointing got stronger, believe me, there was a period of time I did not let up. I found the realm to increase. It's not like living, living out there somewhere in a realm that's, you know, I can't participate with just sitting here waiting for some day to happen. Some day is already taking place. Today is our day to increase. God's already given us availability of a relationship with him and the gifting of his grace. Now all we have to do is be willing to participate and as we participate in these things that God the Holy Ghost is doing, then the, the stronger the flow, the more powerful the effect in our life. Huh? So, you know, I said at the beginning, I, said I used to pray with the understanding until I hit that realm and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Now I just start praying in the Holy Ghost. And it, it, if it doesn't come strong right off the bat, I go stronger. I don't, you know, it, you know, everybody's kind of experienced this where it's kind of like, you know, I don't know how to do it right now. But, you know, it's just kind of a little bit dry and slow, right? And you just give up, right? Huh? Just a little bit dry and slow. It's like kind of something like that, right? And you're like, my, the engine's not starting here, right? <laughs> Well, you just say, you, you just, well, one of the things that I always do is always, I have a habit of acknowledging the person of the Holy Spirit. This isn't me doing it. It's the Holy Ghost that does this through me, okay? He, they all began to speak with other tongues as he gave them utterance. I recognize his presence. See, I never am apart from his presence because I choose not to be. And then I recognize the is to me a manifestation that he's right here with me. Because it only works by him. So immediately, I've just gone to another faith realm, right? Because I see it according to the Word of God as the Word of God per, uh, uh, has spoken it. Now, this produces a, being a, 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 a seeing faith, as it were, a, an experienced faith. God's here right here. I would have not got a bust over my name. It wouldn't even happen unless the Holy Ghost was giving me utterance. Huh? And is a testimony by me that Jesus Christ is at the throne room of heaven. That he's on the throne. Huh? Because the Holy Ghost was not yet given until he huh, was glorified. After that, he was exalted to the right hand of the heaven. He poured forth that which you see and hear. It's a testimony that he's exalted, exalted, glorified and exalted. Now he pour forth that which he see and hear. That's what Peter said, right? So I know that God, the Spirit of the Son, the Holy Spirit, God, heaven, the realms of all divine glory is testifying through me on this earth of who Jesus Christ is by this utterance that seems to be, you know, weird and strange 
to many people. But as you begin to walk with God, and I've watched, I've watched people who don't know the Lord, who haven't built up a resistance against the anointing, against the Holy Ghost, haven't so blasphemed the Holy Ghost or defied the Holy Ghost or grieved the Holy Ghost, as many people in religion have done, they can feel and sense something. What is that? Why does that feel so good when you do that? Do that some more. <laughs> There's a, I feel better. Do you feel better? This is weird. Do, what is that? It's a sound that heaven is here. <laughs> and Christ Jesus is ruling over the realm. Now, religious people get mad. They get angry. Because why? Because they under the same influence and demon power that crucified Jesus. And that's why, the, that's why there is a place where, I, I'm, you know, I, I know when a person goes to church and they're going to go to hell. I know that because they hate the Holy Ghost. I know, they're on the way to hell. I don't care how many times they said Jesus is my Lord. I don't care how many times they knelt down, how many, how many services they've attended, how much offering they put. There is a manifestation. Huh? They, they don't have fellowship with God. There's a clear distinction, you know, because, I, you know, I've been, around, I've been around Catholic nuns, Catholic priests. They, they, they enjoyed. That's beautiful. Halalamakota. They couldn't, they didn't really understand how to participate and they didn't feel liberty within the framework of their company of people to participate, but they enjoyed it. They didn't have anything bad to say. They said, that's wonderful. It's a beautiful gift. That is the gift of God. I wish I could have it. And my answer to that is, oh, you absolutely can have it. Well, my leadership said I can't. Well, who are we going to obey now, God or men? Amen. So, don't they talk to me can you feel that? Can you, can you feel that? Now, I want you to come to a, realm where, a place where you can feel it. Where you... Would activate something on the inside of you. Huh? Because you can feel that. I see that you can feel that. There's certain people I can look around and they can feel that. They don't go No, you say, I can't feel that. Stay around, be in all the meetings. Because you're going to. You're going to. Huh? Believe me, you're going to. Don't sit there and go, I must not be saved. God must not love me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Who knows? I could be the devil incarnate. I don't even know. <laughs> don't even do that. I mean, that's exactly what Satan is doing. God, the Holy Ghost, is comforting you, going and encouraging you. Go, yes, you can do this. You can do this. I want to give you this. Please let me give you this. He's there. You know, the Lord, you know, oh, Lord, bless me. I want to bless you. Please let me bless you. He, he is just so devoted to us having these things. He's so devoted to the, us having these things. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died at Calvary so that we could have them. Are we going to just take them for granted? There's no way I'm just going to take them for granted. My goodness gracious. All the price and expense, this is God's passion. Huh? It's God's passion. Listen, he would think that somehow that the, you know, well, you know, the Lord's going to come and, and do some great thing and, and we're just all going to sit around and wait till he comes. He already came and he sent us to go on his behalf. And it's going to be through our willingness to participate with him that the world is going to see that which is going to break off the yoke from off of them and cause them to be able to have a true opportunity to choose whether they want heaven or hell. Most people, all they know is hell, and a little escape from hell was through some, you know, through some kind of alcohol or drugs or some other kind of thing, some other kind of evil thing. And all it does is just compound the hell that they live in. Yeah, sure. They need to see heaven. Yeah. Where are they going to see heaven? Yeah. The only place that they're going to see heaven is in me and you. Mm -hmm. The only way that you and I are going to hook up with heaven is because we hook up with the Holy Spirit. He brings heaven. He brings to us everything, all the information. He wants to show us the things that are to come. He wants to show us things that are going to happen in the very near future. We're going to have to learn how to yield our members to Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And He's made it so easy. And so when you begin to participate in the service on, uh, on Sunday morning, I want you to begin to recognize, wait a minute, God, the Holy Ghost, is inviting you to come into a realm and there is an anointing present that you can participate in. So just up 
how much you're going to be passionate about worshiping. Don't up how much passion you're going to be about, oh, God, please, I want to have your manifest presence. <laughs> or, oh, God, please, I want to do this or I want to do that. No, 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 no. Go after him. Touch him and begin to worship him. This is what Father wants. This is what he's going to respond to. And, you know, not a bit, no, and no one, when they come to church on Sunday morning, is going to be thrown into a cell that is muckier than the, the cow stall. Because we clean up the church a whole lot better than that. You notice how clean the church is? And it's smelly. It's a little smelly over there in that corner. I don't know what happened in that corner. But it's still smelly over there. But I have not noticed any foul odors or any, you know, mess. Everything looks neat and organized. There's nobody there standing with a gun or a, or a whip threatening you. There's no reason not to be just raptured. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. Must, because if you can't worship in that context, what are you going to look like if they throw you in that prison cell? You're just going to curl up in the corner in the fetal position and die. You're going to give up the ghost right there. Your heart shall fail you for, your heart shall fail you for fear. Amen. Huh? Ah, it's time to rise up and begin to praise God. It's time to rise up and begin to yield ourselves to him. For he has many things that he would reveal himself to us. Seek him. Hold nothing back. And he held nothing back from you. So it's like I was telling Angelica. Angelica, you now know the realm of prophecy. She said, well, I, you know, the one thing I'm a little concerned about is, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess up in the future. You can't mess up. With a sincere and true heart, you can't mess up. Where, where were you at? You were just, you were in the realm of heaven. You, were, you weren't sitting there trying to prophesy. Oh, I need to prophesy because the pastor's like really upset at me now. And he's like thinking, man, if I don't prophesy here in the next couple of years, I'm really not going to be of much value. So it's time for me to produce something. We're not looking for you to produce anything, right? Because nothing's going to happen in that stressed out realm, right? I want to tell you one thing. You, let me just say, give you a key. You cannot force the anointing. You cannot force it. And the more you try to force the anointing, the less there's going to be anything. Huh? You flow there. It just happens. Huh? We don't try to create what we had last week or yesterday. This is fresh bread coming down out of heaven. Uh, the, what was yesterday has got worms in it, man. Don't bring that out. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to be impressed. Everybody's going to be grossed out. I mean, get it out. Ah! Rabo stara neighbor. The constant to walk with the learning to, to walk with him. And of course we understand that. We understand that in the context that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why the Lord took them through the wilderness and fed them on manna, so that they could learn that continual dependency. And so then Jesus said, Moses did not give you the true bread, he did not give you the true manna. I am the true bread, now live by me. How? In what way? The same way we saw them live by the manna. Every day they were dependent upon it. They couldn't live on yesterday's experience. Forget, you know, tomorrow's going to take care of itself. Got to give you a double portion on Friday to take care of you through Sunday, Saturday, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. But I mean, just walking out, walking this out with the Lord, making it so simple, making it easy, having a boldness, having the confidence, knowing that this is Father's will. This is what he's given us. This is one thing you can know for sure is the will of God. This is what Father wants in your life. He wants you to have these things. He wants to fill your mouth with a, with a very special kind of prophecy. Oh, forgive me, a very special kind of praise. Prophecy. Huh? It was taught in the Old Testament in the context of those musicians who worship. Now, there is an exception. And God gave it, had given Moses a special anointing. Of course, Numbers chapter 11 is what I'm referring to. And I'm just trying to lay a foundation here to be able to talk a little bit more about what I want to say. Because my goal, my desire is in the school of the Spirit here in this meeting. I want to see over the next month or two at most... Everybody in this place prophesying. I'm going to give you homework, okay? Uh, I, there, I'm going to be able to communicate things to you in the context of this room right here in the School of Spirit every other week that I, there's no way I will have the opportunity to really minister to you or communicate to you in the context of the sanctuary in the church service because there's a unique dimension of what goes on there that's different from what's going on here. But I am devoted, dedicated to 
what God, the Holy Spirit, is devoted and dedicated to, and that is bringing you into a place in a realm of prophecy. Now, I watched Moses, now in Numbers chapter 11, who just had a measure of the Spirit. He just had a measure of the Holy Ghost. He didn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost. It was not available. What you have right now, Moses did not have. <laughs> but what Moses had, he was he more fully developed in and utilized what little he had. We have to be careful that we don't run the risk of having far more than anybody else ever had, but yet doing less with it. Mm -hmm. We have to not run that risk because we can look in the Bible and see people who had far less than what we had and yet did far more with it. And no, but, well, and I'm just not, you can't, you can't, you can't stop me. You can't put, you cannot push, you can't push me down and I'm going to stay down. It just, it doesn't work. I'm too, I'm too fast. I'm too wiry. I'm too you know, flexible, I bend real easy, I take pain, punches. You can't, you, you're going to have to get a bat and knock me out, man, because I'm not going to stop. Are you with me? Yeah. And then as soon as I come, as soon as I become coherent, I'm right back at it. You can't, st you can't stop us. There's no way to stop us. If you don't want to be stopped, you can't be stopped. You got all heaven backing you up. This is far more than being flexible and, 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 and really coordinated and whatnot. This, this is the all power of heavens on your side. To know that, to believe that. It's fundamental to having everything that God has for you. To know that this is what Father wants me to do is fundamental to being able to do it. I mean, if, there, if there's a key to functioning in all the gifts of the Spirit, it would be just simply faith. And faith has for its foundation trusting the Father. It, trusting the Father is trusting Him. He, faith. Uh, faith is a majestic realm. It's a realm of great glory and power. It's the realm when the... When the king comes walking in, uh, the king has a power. You can recognize the king. You can recognize people who are extremely wealthy. There is a power to that. Even if they haven't got the spirit, there's just a power to it. Now, how about those? How about Christ Jesus? <laughs> Who's the king of kings? With that, that a dimension of power and authority. When he comes and walk in the room, you're, you're going to know him. What was it? Wednesday night, right there at the end of the meeting. Whew, the gift of faith. I, I felt the gift of faith. I love feeling the gift of faith. It has such power and glory and majesty. And it's just an attribute. It's just a manifestation of spirit. <laughs> just, just, and there's so much more that Father has for us. Literally, there is a place to come and grow and develop and mature in faith where you can move mountains out of the way. Huh? And, and the Lord using these, these, um, statements that are not hyperboles by any stretch of the imagination. They're not an exaggerated point. It's, it's using a, a scenario to where that it, it sets up an extreme situation to have something such a little bit of something to do such a great magnitude of something else that would result in a great magnitude of something else. To have faith as small as a mustard seed to ultimately move mountains. So what would it look like then if you had a whole bunch of faith? If with just a little teeny bit of faith you can move mountains, nothing would be impossible. What happens, when, what do you look like when you're full of faith, man? You got a lot more than a mustard seed. The Lord making a point that look, I, what I have for you is immeasurable, incomprehensible, but it only belongs to heaven. It only belongs, the. The Holy Spirit and heaven are synonyms. Make them synonyms. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, He's communicating heaven. Wherever you're feeling heaven, Holy Spirit is there. Okay? That's just the way it is. That's why, though they are distinctively different, the Holy Spirit is a person. He always brings heaven with them. We can understand and define heaven, what is heaven, on the basis of what the Spirit of Holiness, the Holy Spirit, is doing. And, and so what God chose to do was to put a unique kind of speech in our mouth because he gave us a unique kind of heart that never existed before in the realm of men. It's a resurrected heart. huh? It's a heart that's just like his, united with his. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak. 
Now the Holy Ghost sets up habitation here and these divine utterances come in out of our mouth. He's giving us the tongue of the learned so that we may speak the right kinds of words, the words which Father spoke and speaks. When he speaks, the universe is formed. Galaxies are created. Huh? He's teaching us how to declare those things which he himself declares. And it all begins in praise. And I, I want to show you a couple of things here now trying to wrap this up. You know, I, I always, it's about time I get to my point, we run out of time. And, uh, but I'm just seating you, I'm seating you. And as I'm seating you, as I'm talking, you know what I'm talking out of? I'm talking out of, of a gift of prophecy. I'm talking out of a gift of of knowledge. I'm talking out of a gift, a revelatory gift. I want to talk to you about the gift of, of, of knowledge because, but that, that's going to be later because I believe a lot of people misunderstand it. There's only one verse of scripture in the Bible really that uses the phrase word of knowledge. All knowledge is based upon something far more vast than the concepts of what most people have given to that revelatory gift. But because as I'm talking, as I'm ministering to you, you're receiving something, you're feeling something. You're hearing something, you're feeling something that grabs a hold of you, that causes you to be alert. My kids, I mean, you know, Ruthanna and Elizabeth and Joshua and Daniel, and this is a whole lot about what went on at home as well, both by their mother and myself, that when, as, as they began to be, grow older, and even when they were young at times, but especially as they grew older, they sat there totally captivated, just captivated by the anointing. Captivated, really, uh, captivated by the things that was being spoken, the words that were spoken. What they were being captivated was the anointing by which those words were being carried. Therefore, as they were captivated by it, the effect, the influence, the means by which those words were conveyed became a part of their being. So that then they can just, uh, they just naturally do it. They were raised in it. They never rejected it. They've never rebelled against it. They've never found a complaint against God. Complaining against God is wrong, and you're going to have to repent of it. I mean, I know that it is a barrier for some people. If you've complained against God, if you've complained against the anointing, if you've complained against the way things have gone down, listen, you know, I'm the first one to admit that what's coming out of my mouth is not infallible, but Papa backs it up as though it was. I'm just telling you, that's just who he is. People don't know how loyal he is. He's so loyal. When I've given myself to him, you know, when, I, when I'm, I'm his instrument of righteousness and I've said, I'm going to speak on you, man, I don't want to speak anything else. You know, I can say things that aren't just altogether right and accurate, but yet he is so committed to me and so loyal to me, he's going to back it up. I've watched many ministers say things that are just so off. I mean, easily provable that it's just not the word of God, but faith, they were anointed by the Father and he's so loyal to them. You better not touch that person. You better respect that office. You better respect that mantle. You better respect that anointing because I'm telling you, Father is a, a, a faithful God who's in covenant relationship and he's jealous over those people who love him. You know, he's not, Father is not as devoted to, he wants accuracy. He clearly tells us he wants accuracy. But when he captivates somebody's heart, man, when somebody's heart is captivated by him and they've come into a place uh, of, of union with them through the new birth, then you never have met someone so furious, fer, I mean, so ferociously loyal, huh, as the Father is. And you can take that for yourself. Hallelujah. You don't have to just take it for me. Oh, God's fa Father's ferociously loyal to the pastor. No, he's ferociously loyal to you. Huh? Huh? And the greater the anointing and manifested is and manifested in your life, the more protective he's going to be over his stuff. But yet he's already protective. No matter who you are, if you're just a baby, he's just protective of you. You know, he we don't understand this. These are some things about dad that we don't understand. He said, we, we don't have those kind of models that we need to have in the church and that should be in existence to show that kind of faithfulness, that kind of covenant, that kind of commitment. There's no one like him. We are growing up and maturing in every way to be like him in the dimensions of who he is and his love. Ah, oh, my. 
And the beautiful thing is that the Lord has given us the privilege to comprehend with all saints. <laughs> to be able to comprehend it. Hallelujah. That's a, that's a big word, that big word. It's, comprehend means to fully understand. Mm -hmm. To comprehend, I got it. What is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth? To know the love of Christ. You know, when you re that should speak volumes to us because every time the Lord wants to reveal himself and express himself and make known himself and qualify himself and even quantitate himself, he does it on the basis of his love. <laughs> when he uses word like mercy, <laughs> goodness, and long suffering, he's, he's, he's qualifying his love. It's beautiful. So beautiful. The slightest little bit of repentance, the slightest bit of willingness, the slightest, the slightest little bit of want to. I think there's nothing that saddens Father's hearts more than people to think that, they don't, that he doesn't love them. I don't think there's anything that saddens his heart more. I don't think the worst sin saddens Father's heart more than one of his child doubting that he loves him. I'm, this, I, this, is how, this is my knowledge of the Father. And just, so don't, don't, just don't do that. Just don't even do that. I mean, you know, if you're not feeling, feeling love, pray in the Holy Ghost tell you to. <laughs> because he's going to make you, he's going to cause that. He's poured this love in the heart. And, you know, I was talking about being filled, to, to be filled with the Spirit. It, you know, on, on the one side, on Jude, we say, uh, build yourself up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God. And you can, uh, you know, almost as it were, see that's a participation of that inward working of God who lives and, ha and dwells on the inside of us, who, who, who has made our life his his dwelling place, his habitation. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. Hey, that's the place you like to walk around in. Yeah, that's, that's the garden you like to walk, stroll in. I mean, he, all his delights are with the sons of men. Figure that out. Huh? Revel in that for a little while. I mean, huh? and, and, and you can only say, well, he just loves pastor so much. No, he loves you. He, he, God loves the whole world so much he wants to bring everyone into a personal relationship with us. Then he, after having done so, he has baptized us with all the unlimited authority of heaven. This somehow we just neglect. Don't neglect. Because it's going to produce praise on the inside of you. A worship the Father has been earnest to see. Something that's in truth. Something, something, something in other words, that you feel. He said, my people sit around me as though they were my people. And with their words, they speak. They sound like my people. But their heart's not anywhere near me. So he said over and over and over again. And so he produced within us the ability to feel the love, to feel his presence, to begin to comprehend and to understand it, where you can literally step into that place and begin to sing with the Holy Ghost, begin to sing with Christ Jesus who stands in the midst of his church. I can feel him. It is a realm in which I enter into by choice and many, many times have been faced with, as it were, the armies of hell trying to say, I can't come in. Huh? But I already found out I could come in. Huh? And these big guys standing at the door trying to tell me I can't come in. They didn't have a chance stopping me. Not because of anything that I am and my own strength or ability. Because I don't come with sword or shield. Uh, I come in the name of the Lord. I run through a troop leap over a wall. I smash them. I smash them. They don't stand a chance. The smallest child with, filled with the Spirit can destroy every empty hell with a word of faith. With a word of faith, every, every, every great angel of darkness has to bow huh, to that word of faith, to that word of authority, has to obey to the person who knows how to submit themselves to God, yield themselves to God. And it's not a head knowledge. Oh, I must submit myself to God. Okay, God, I submit myself to you. No, 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 no. It is a divine empowerment that begins with, Lord, I submit myself to you. It can begin with words. It can begin with an acknowledgement of God. But it ends up with a wonderful expression of boldness and authority inside of our spirit where we won't be stopped. Mm. I want you to praise like you've never praised before. I wanted to say something about Numbers chapter 11. I get distracted. I got all kinds of things going on over here because I don't know what I'm going to say next. I'm being led. And, and the Lord just addresses many different things because what, what will happen? Somebody said, well, you got off topic. No, I didn't. I began to deal with things that would prevent you, keep you back, practical issues that you've got to understand. You have to rise up and say, no, I'm not going to be denied. 
I'm not going to be denied. I'm not going to be denied. I'm not letting go of this. I'm not letting go of this realm. Jacob did not let go of the realm. I will not. Until I step into the fullness of all that you planned for my life. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Your protection, your provision, and your perfection. Hallelujah. So Moses was able to take of that grace that was given to him, that spirit that was upon him, that anointing, in other words, that mantle, that divine ability. God gives us an anointing to do things, to have abilities, divine abilities. An anointing that was upon him, he had divine ability within that anointing. One of those divine abilities that he had within that anointing was to prophesy, to speak forth the word of God. And so because the Lord wanted there to be more people who could speak on his behalf to begin to minister to the people of Israel because of their doubt and murmuring and complaining. They needed some ministry going on in there. Huh? So there was plus three million people and only one guy. I mean, how much can Mo and Moses is captivated by the Lord. He's already, he's already leaving church. He's staying in church. I mean, he's like, he's like stuck. I would be stuck with him. And then besides that, when he left, nobody wanted to look at him because the glory of God was coming off of him so intense. Right? <laughs> so, he, so he took mine. <laughs> is, there, is there any dimension of the things that are available in the Bible that you don't want? Is there any dimension of the things that, are or that we read about in the Bible that you don't want? I believe one of the great manifestations of the works of Jesus Christ that will be seen in these last days. I know it was seen in the early days, so it's not for the, for only reserved for the last days is, the, is the, the glory of transfiguration where the brightness of Christ Jesus that shone from his face in the Mount of Transfiguration on his people. It was on, it was on Peter. His, his, he, he cast a shadow. The brightness. I mean, when you, when you think about the glory that is there, there is a glory. There is a manifest glory. We begin to feel it and touch it in the joy. We begin to feel it and touch it in the love. We begin to feel it and touch it as we're communing with God. I found the realm is that you can break through into that realm with praise and thanksgiving and, and adoration. Immediately there is an interaction with God, the Holy Ghost, that something happens inside of us that causes us in that participation to yield in a way that we couldn't yield otherwise. It takes us out of murmuring and complaint and disappointment and rejection and all the other stuff and gets us over whatever will get us over into thanksgiving. Whatever will get us over into thanksgiving. Whatever will get us over into speaking praise. Whatever will get us over into speaking good things. To speaking those things that belong to faith. To just saying that it's good. Praise God everything's good. Huh? Ooh. You want to feel the goodness? Start saying everything's good by the anointing. Start praising Him. It's not positive thinking. It's not positive confession. It's praise. It's declaring the Word. The Word of God is far more than some positive confession. <laughs> the Word of God is living and powerful. Not some positive confession. It's spirit. It's life. Huh? Come on. Start speaking. Spirit and life. Yes, huh. Huh. Dai is Hallelujah. <laughs> Start speaking that which is living and powerful. Hallelujah. Because that's, once again, that's, that's the realm of prophecy. That is the realm of declaring the word of God. And, and we know this is the promise to all of us, to every generation, as many as, as many as the Lord our God shall call. As many as will believe. And he's calling. And his call is to whosoever will. Yeah. Everybody can come. Not everyone comes. It's sad. I've come. I've come. Hallelujah. <laughs> You've come. You're here. So you should not be without. You've got to get over your fear. Fear hath torment. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. Fear produces everything that would cause you to feel rejected, unwanted, unusable, uh, without boldness, boldness that is there in the love. See, in the love we'll have boldness in the day of judgment. The boldness that is there in the love produces within us a great confidence. I have no reason to fear. 
Hallelujah. And, 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 and that's why in the, in the anointing, all self-consciousness, you learn. You learn. You know, you won't, you won't even have, to, in the realms of the anointing, you won't even have to concern yourself about anything because you don't even have hardly any self-consciousness. I don't. I figure it works that way for everybody else. Huh? I mean, in the realms of this, in the realms of the anointing, I don't even remember that I ever sinned. I would have to sit and think about it. Did I sin? Have I sinned? Huh? It's like everything's perfect. Everything, because that's where, that's what, that's what the presence of, the Lord doesn't, his presence doesn't allow any sin in. That's why you can't find any. And he's allowed us in. That's why we can't find any about ourselves. It's just a glory realm. That's why we're presented before him thoughtless, with boldness and great confidence. It's, it's, just, it's just a miracle of his presence. It's a, it's a great miracle of transformation that took place through the very life blood of Christ Jesus, the living God, that allowed us to cross over through a veil of his flesh into a realm of the very presence of Almighty God where there is no consciousness of sin or sense of it. We're void of offense. It's amazing. I don't want anybody to be without that. Religion's got you stuck over there feeling, oh, I'm just such a miracle. <laughs> because it's not to let you come in. Religion doesn't go in, and those who would come in, religion prevents. Yes. Nothing's changed. Yes. It was personified in the Pharisees of the day, but <laughs> the same spirits around now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Any good? Any good? He looks at to all of us and to those who are near and far off. He says, come on in. Peace. He speaks peace, and when he speaks peace, he breathes on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Peace I give unto you. The, the, that's the, that peace comes by the Holy Spirit. Uh, that is the spirit of prophecy right there. It is. It's the spirit of prophecy. It's a New Testament prophecy. It's a new kind of prophecy. It's a new kind of utterance. It unites us to speak one new language, one new tongue. Out of that same realm, I begin to prophesy. I begin to speak on his behalf. I begin to rejoice in him. It sounds like a song that I'm singing. It sounds like a poem that I've rehearsed to say. It's something beautiful. It's all about all that he's doing in all of his ways. It's about his glory and his goodness. This everlasting forevermore. It cannot fail anyone who puts their trust in him. Hallelujah. It's prophecy. No, God, I praise you and I bless you for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Prophecy. It's the beginnings of prophecy. Hallelujah. 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 And, uh, and of course, Paul says it's saying Jesus. Paul said, saying Jesus is the Lord, this spirit of prophecy. Huh? When, you know, when it's just, when it comes out with that flow. And, 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 and it's, not just a, it's not just limited to the framework of an uh, intellectual affirmation. It's just there. Jesus Christ. Right? A recognition, a knowledge, an understanding. He, he's my Lord. He's my Savior. He's right here with me. It's the spirit of prophecy. It even just begins by you being able to say, Jesus Christ is my Lord, he's my Savior. To know that you're saved is actually the beginning of functioning in the knowledge of God or the word of knowledge. Because you know something that is not possible for you to know out of any framework of your own understanding. This is a knowledge that came from God. I know that I've been born again. A spirit knowledge. A spirit knowledge. That's where all word of knowledge begins. We make it way too complicated, trying to get to a far too complicated area and not enjoying the relationship that develops and causes it to grow. And that's what I'm devoted here in this place to making sure that I communicate effectively. Look. It, there, it's, uh, it's really much more simple than what we've made it to be, okay? And I want to read this first scripture before, before I close. Hallelujah. Can you feel that? Yes. Ooh, that's, that's that realm. That's it. That's like, that's where you want to stay. Right there. I don't want to move. And if you don't feel that realm, don't worry about it. Just keep coming back. Because I'm guarantee you, we'll be making sure that you feel that realm. We'll jump on you before too long. Or you come jump on us. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. 
to lay hold on the anointing, to draw on the anointing, to place a demand on the anointing. That's what the woman with the issue of blood did. She placed a demand on the anointing. She didn't ask for permission. She said, I'm going to place a demand on the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And you're going to do that too because you're going to know how much the Father loves you, how much the will of the Father is for you to have all these things. And you're going to not be hindered anymore. You're not going to let stuff stand in your way anymore. Huh? You're not going to be beat up, beat down. Huh? No way. You got all heaven backing up, backing you. And no reason for you to. So, you know, hallelujah. Before I read verse 17, 18 is what I want to read. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's what happens to you, you know. That realm... You just want to praise, huh? You just want to praise, huh? You just want to sing. You just want to worship. You just want to say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. I mean, that's prophecy. That's the realm of prophecy. And there's many different, there's, there's, well, I should say there's several dimensions to prophecy, but this is where I want to stay right now because it's the foundation of it. And I want to just show you this foundational uh, uh, aspect of prophecy here in a New Testament sense that I've laid a groundwork for in the Old Testament, and, and that is this, right here in verse 11. After, after all of these languages are named because they hear every man speaking in his own language, okay? First of all, that's a miracle because you've got a bunch of people out there, right? And just understand this. They had miracle translation devices on. Okay, like at the UN, everybody's got this headphone on, right? And they're hearing what everybody's saying in their own language. That's what's going on. It's supernatural. It's the only way it can work. Figure out the logistics. Think about it. 120 people all speaking in other languages as the Holy Ghost gives them utterance. huh? And then you've got a whole mass of people out there without any kind of amplification system huh? in the streets hearing every man in his own language. Think about it. If we all start speaking in, 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 in English right now, all of us, all at the same time, huh? And somebody's standing right outside the hall, they're going to go, what on earth? Because they won't understand a single thing of it. Because if everybody's saying, you know, different things. But I, just, I want to make that point because you've got all these languages. What, what did every one of them hear? Here's what every one of them heard. This is the interpretation of what is actually going on when I'm going banda la stikerevet and amanda la rabekitistapaya, they heard everyone in their own language speaking the wonderful works of God. Hallelujah. You want to understand what that is? Start reading the Psalms that are devoted to declaring the wonderful works of God. That's what's going on. is praise. That's why Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and I'm going to try to close with this, but I've got to get 17, 18 yet. Okay? <laughs> Because I know I'm, I'm always running over time and I, and I try to put bounds upon myself and the Lord breaks those bounds for me every time. He fills my spirit up with these things to say. Hallelujah. And they are producing you things to say. Hallelujah. You don't know how well you can actually preach till you get out there into a place and need to preach and you're going to go, it wasn't me speaking. It was the Spirit of my Father. It wasn't just the Spirit of the Father. It was the Holy Spirit. It wasn't just the Holy Spirit. It was the Spirit of the Son, all three in one, speaking to you at the same time. Isn't that radical? Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why I take no thought what I should say when I'm brought before. Even the most, you know, most influential, most consequential people, because in the self-same hour, Self same hour. Mandak to say at that moment, at that self same time, literally. It's not like you get an hour before. At the self at the moment in time that you speak now, God's speaking through us. If we just trust him, can't rehearse nothing. No, here's the only, here's how you rehearse. Get ready to speak. To speak something. You ready? You ready? Here's how you here's how you rehearse. That's how you rehearse. Then, bang, here it comes. Hallelujah. If you go to a wedding that I do, you'll see me. If there's a bunch of unbelievers there, religious people, you know, I don't want to create a, is, is, is a conflict, too, too much of conflict, so I'll be put my hand over my mouth. Sometimes I turn away. And then sometimes I just go ahead and shout it. 
but, but that's what's going on because I'm not going to meditate on what I'm saying. I'm going to speak by prophecy. I'm going to speak by knowledge. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak by revelation and by doctrine. Mm, what a wonderful realm. So free, so liberating. It takes all the pressure away. Hallelujah. It brings re heavenly results. Praise God. That's what we want. But uh, I want you to look quickly with me in 2 Corinthians. Wow, I feel the glory of God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, nothing keeping me out of this realm. Nothing can, se nothing can separate me from this realm. Nothing can separate. Not things present nor things to come. Nothing. I mean, nothing. No powers, no principalities. Nothing can separate me from this realm. Except for me. I can choose not to go into the realm. Except for you, you can choose not to go in this realm. But as long as you want this realm, this realm's yours. Sure, it belongs to you. See, Paul says right here in uh, verse um, 14, he says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, my understanding is unfruitful. In verse 15, 16 is what I want to really focus on, but I want to just back up. What shall we say then? I'll pray with the spirit, I'll pray in tongues, because that's the synonym he's using, tongues with the spirit. Okay. Or I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing in the Spirit. This is what we're going to do. And I'm on verse 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I will sing in the Spirit and I'll sing with the understanding also. And always this praying in the Spirit precedes praying with the understanding. It's not by accident. It is sequential. You understand me? Singing in the Spirit is supposed to precede singing with the understanding. I cannot prove it, but you'll be, but the Lord will prove it to you later. Okay, I, when you get to heaven, you're going to find out something. In the early church, I can almost prove it. In the early church, the whole meeting began just like it began in Acts chapter 2. Everybody's... And the Corinthians just got carried away with it. So it was from beginning to end. People getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. People falling out under the power. People getting healed. Signs, wonders, miracles taking place. It was glorious. Read about it. It was glorious. It's just that there wasn't... A time to just stop and begin to talk about the very basic things Christ Jesus manifested in the flesh, born of a virgin, for the purpose of going to the cross and dying for your sins. And let me break this thing down for you. That's what Paul was doing. It's time to, there's people, there's people unlearned here. They're not saved. They don't know anything about salvation. They don't know anything about the means of salvation and how to give their life over to the Lord. They need to hear the gospel, the same gospel that was preached by Peter at Cornelius' house. They need to hear it. Stop for a minute. That's all he was saying. That's all he was saying. And um, in that, can you imagine every church service just started just like on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2? That's what it was. And they didn't just start singing, just, okay, we're going to throw the ever head up. We practiced on Saturday night. It started off, it started off singing the Spirit. Just the song that was sang. Even a monotone person can sing that way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't have to have an excellent voice. You don't have to, right? Have, you know, great instrument, you know, great skills in, in, in some instrument to be able to do that. So he says here in verse 16, he says, else when you are blessing with the Spirit, if you don't, if, it, if, if praying and singing in the Holy Ghost does not excel to something that can be heard and understood in, the, in a person's language with their words, Okay, how then, okay, you're blessing with the Spirit. Who are you blessing? Who are you blessing? That's very good. You need, you need, there's a bunch of theologians that you need to go talk to because they think that you're just building your own self up. Okay? So you can, you got an assignment now. There's a bunch of theologians out there who need to hear you preach. Huh? Because he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks unto God, not unto men. Okay, we need to forget, don't forget about that. You're supposed to interpret it. No, you're not. No, there is, a, there is a realm where it does need to be interpreted. Mm -hmm. huh? But here, we're, here what we're seeing is, is, is Paul's actually showing us a natural flow to interpretation. Mm -hmm. He's showing us a natural flow to the excel. See that? It's going from the prayer to the prophecy, as it were. 
huh? Mm -hmm. From the tongue to the interpretation of tongue. It's a natural flow. It's not sitting, everybody silent, waiting. Okay, we're waiting for whoever's got the gift of interpretation. It, you know, we've done that, and, and praise God, everybody was trying really hard, but it's just, it's, it's much more fluid than that. It's much more spontaneous than that. It's much more beautiful. It takes a whole lot less effort. Everything that God would do through us takes very little effort on our part. It really is almost effortless. It's like jumping in the river and going with the flow. Huh? Floating on your back. It's true. And listen, I'm, listen I've had the privilege of being able to spend a great deal of time with men of God that have been used in far greater ways than I've had the privilege of being used. And if there's one thing about them that's different from me, they've made it easier than I've made it. And if there's anything maybe different from, from me than you, is I've made it easier than you've made it. It's really very, very easy. And the more you flow in the anointing, the easier it is and the easier you understand it. It's just, just caught away. Just come. Psh, psh, psh. This is the ability which God gives and not man. Something to happen by divine power. I'm just psh, taken away. I want to learn how to be taken away. So you're blessing God with the Spirit. just want to put that in there so everybody understands who they're blessing. You're blessing with the Spirit. But how shall those that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen unless that natural flow isn't taking place? Huh? You, if you watch me, you watch me. When I'm singing, I'm worshiping. I'll, I'll go to a place and I'll, and I'll begin to sing in the Spirit. And I'll stay with it. And then all of a sudden a song will erupt. And it's got a very different feel to it, doesn't it? That song has a very feel, beautiful feel. Because you're in it and participating with it, you got it. It's yours. You just don't realize it. Maybe. It's yours. It's already yours. It's contagious. It's contagious. You get around it, you got it. It's just, it's just, it's contagious. Look at Saul. It's contagious. If people got around Elijah, they didn't even, they weren't even believers. They were from Syria. It was, they prophesying, you know. Great is the Lord. There's no one like him, you know. He's the maker of the heavens and the earth. His people is Israel. <laughs> you know? Your mouth just taken away by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Many people are like Moses. I can't speak. And the Lord's saying, who formed the mouth? <laughs> Sue says, how shall they, how is the they that occupy the un, room, the unroom, unlearned, say amen to your giving of thanks? There it is. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's giving of thanks. It's blessing the Lord. Where there's praise, there's singing, or where there's prayer, or where there's singing, it's right back to the same thing that we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 12. It's that that's how close you are to prophecy and didn't know it. Huh? <laughs> You've been living, not next door, amen, in the same room, okay? <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. So, I want you to believe it. I want, you to, I want you to go over these verses of Scripture. I want you to just thank the Lord for what He's given, okay? Don't beg Him for what He's already given you, okay? Get out of that. Just start giving thanks for what He's given you, and watch what happens, amen. Hallelujah. Give your mouth to praise and thanksgiving. Don't give your mouth to murmuring and complaining. Giving your mouth to murmuring and complaining works contrary to that flow. Don't mess yourself up. <laughs> don't do that. Just a dole reminder de este pedibri is thanksgiving. Get it with your lips and your mouth. Get it with your heart. Get thanksgiving in your heart. Just be thankful. Somebody said, I don't have anything to be thankful for. Oh, yeah, you do. You forgot. You've got a lot of things to be thankful for. Huh. You know, I, there's times that I would take everybody who's unthankful. Maybe one day the Lord will bless me and I have a, a 747. <laughs> and I can load up everybody who I find in the meeting that is unthankful, put them in the 747, and then go to one of the poorest areas of the world 
and just have them work with the people for a couple of days, get them all back in the 747, and it'd be revival. It's revival. We're like, do we get to go home now? And everything, and then until they, and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to land on the ground. They're going to kiss the ground. They're going to praise God. They're going to give thanks. And it's going to take them about two to three weeks to come back under that oppression again and forget. That's what happens to us. But boy, I'm going to tell you, you start getting in this relationship and here's a beautiful thing. The Holy Spirit continually brings into our remembrance. I don't even have to remember. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's true. I don't have to remember. I don't have to remember to praise him. He fills me with it. I don't have to remember to acknowledge him. He fills me with it. He just brings all these things into my remembrance. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you so much that there's hungry people here in this place willing to receive from you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for your manifest presence. Thank you for your glory here in this room. Thank you for your glory. Huh, filling the hearts and the lives of the people here in the abiding place. Thank you, God, for making this church the abiding place. <laughs> It'd be terrible if we called ourselves the abiding place and there was no abiding. Yeah. Oh, God, in your presence. I thank you, Papa, for it. Thank you for your mercy that endures forever. Thank you for your goodness. And I, I ask you, Lord, cause everyone in here, Holy Spirit, you're the encourager, you're the comforter, you're the confidence builder, you're the one who gives boldness, you're the one who gives assurance. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody in this place will be so built up in the faith, so built up, so strengthened, so bold, so confident, so full of assurance that everything that you have declared, they can have. And... And I know, Lord, that you're doing it. Amen. And I thank you, Father, that everyone will say yes to you. Amen. Amen. That's all you got to do is just say yes, yes, yes. That's why I love that song. I'll say yes. That's about all we've got to do. Let, let me just challenge you with this one last thing. <laughs> I've been saying that for a long time. but <laughs> It just keeps coming, right? It's very interesting to me how that the most simple people are able to function in the deepest, glorious realms of the manifest presence of God. It's like, it's almost like that the most childlike people, people who are just, you know, recklessly competent that they can do things. Huh? They're just almost, they're, they're, they're borderline, you know, you know, imaginative kind of people. You with me? You understand what I'm talking, the kind of people I'm talking about, right? They're just always saying they can do it and they can't do nothing, you know, right? They're talking about surfing. If you they pedal out, they're doing the stink bug, right? They just, are you with me? You understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and it does, if you don't know surfing terminology, you can ask me later. I'll tell you what that means. It's, and, uh, but it just seems that when people are just willing to just be that kind, so simple and just so confident, that they can do these things because God said they can do them. They just take right off. People who are more thoughtful, more thinking, probably you would probably trust a little bit more from a natural perspective what their judgments are and what they say and the directions they give, right? That are going to be less exaggerative. Are you with me? Yeah. I, I'm making a point. You've got to be, you got to uh, take this loosely with me. Are you understand? Yeah. They're, they're sitting around perplexed about how to move forward. That's why the Lord says, you must be converted and become like a little child. You just got to trust me. You got to be one of just boasting in your daddy saying, well, I could do that. I could do anything. What, what do you want to do next? Miracle, no problem. Raise the dead, where are they at? <laughs> sure, no problem. Not a problem. We've been trained to think way too much about stuff and just, the Lord just wants us to do it. He wants us he wants us to just kiss him and, and hug him and love him and know that we're the best in his eyes. He's made us that because he's brought us into Christ Jesus. Don't evaluate yourself or compare yourself among yourself and don't even compare yourself within the framework of what you think you know about yourself. Just know Jesus. Just know Jesus. Determine to know nothing but Jesus. Especially about you. Just about you. I determine to know nothing to not know anyone in the flesh. <laughs> To not know myself in the flesh, but to know Christ Jesus. <laughs> to know Jesus. Just know Jesus now. Just know him. Amen.
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Okay.